bunnies, anime girls, free jemmies. What could this be but a six month or half year anniversary celebration? Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lace. Today we have a blue archive video. We're gonna be talking about the half year anniversary as well as the upcoming roadmap. And so my guys, grab your seatbelt and buckle up because this is gonna be a pretty sick ride. And so to kick things off, we have the pre-registration for essentially a bunch of jemmies. So as always, I will be linking these bad boys down in the description below. But if you have not filled out this kind of form for the cruise ticket, I highly suggest you do so because you will get a pre-registration gift of 1.2k pyrocines aka 10 rolls so all you got to do is select your os this is android os slap in your email uh, papalace at gmail.com this is not my real email just hit the pre-registration button down here and you'll be smooth sailing <laughs> get it all right and so after that what we have is the event itself so this is essentially your bunny chases on board this is absolutely one of the most anticipated events since the start of the game. For a lot of people, actually, I do believe they saw Asna, they saw Bunny Asna, as well as Bunny Karin, and they were like, I'm playing this game for sure. And I'm going to play it with one hand. And so essentially, this page over here is really like a summary of the upcoming event. To be honest, I actually did cover this event in one of my previous videos. I would really highly recommend you check it out because there is a little bit of preparation that you can do to make sure that you can maximize your rewards from this. And to give you a hint as to what you need to prepare for, you can see that there are some three star characters in here. We've got Karin, who is super important to the PvP meta, the Hoshino killer. We've got Neru. Um, she's Neru. And on top of that, we've just got a whole bunch of great rewards in general. And so TLDR, go over, check that video out. I'd really appreciate it because it means you're supporting me. However, that said, let's move on and I'm gonna stop shilling myself. All right, and so this is the real meat and bones of the video. This is what I really wanna talk about because we have the updates, the roadmap for up until July. So that's probably for about like the next two months. And so to kick things off, we have bunny chases on board coming up next. I believe it is in two weeks. So you guys need to prepare Pair. And so with this event, we will be receiving the characters Neru, Bunny, Karin, Bunny, Asna, Bunny, Natsu, No Bunny, and Mari, No Bunny either. Of all of these units, you need to remember that the only limited ones are the Karin Bunny and the Asna Bunny. However, don't be kind of like spooked if you can't get them because on JP, they are finally getting the reruns. They have gotten the Summer Azusa, they've got the Summon Bashio, and I do believe they are getting like the Summer Hina and the Summer Iori, the rest of it, right? So if you guys don't get your bunnies this time, don't don't worry too much about it, you only have to wait a year. However, conversely, what that means is that you should only realistically be going for Karin Bunny and Asna Bunny because Neru Bunny, Natsu, and Mari are all gonna be permanent. However, however, if you are meta slaving, the Natsu is almost a must pull. So if I quickly come over to Stocky's not serious raid rating, remember this is from a raid perspective and I'm gonna show you guys Natsu over here. You'll see that Natsu is actually very, very highly rated for essentially all of these different bosses. And the place that she really, really thrives is on Peroro where you would need a tank that can actually cleanse. There are obviously ways to get around this. We could use some other like cleansing characters. However, from a meta perspective, Natsu is kind of like your all-in-one, one-stop shop kind of character that will really, really help you on Peroro. On the other hand, coming back to a pool perspective, Natsu, she is a permanent unit. And so, my guys, just go for the bunnies. I know you guys have been waiting. I know you guys have been waiting so freaking long. I've been waiting to watch you guys pull because I can't pull because I want Miku. Despite this guide over here saying a skip on the Miku, I am still going for her because I am definitely a collector. I 100% need to get these units that may never come back. And so with that in mind, let's head back over to this one over here. So Neru Bunny, she's good, but in recent content, apparently she's been butchered. So I believe in insane or in like the new game mode. Aaron Bunny herself is quite good. She is very good for Peroro. She is a blue attacker. Asna Bunny is also quite decent, another blue unit. However, I do believe she is a debuffer. But from a meta point of view, I wouldn't call her 100% critical. And then lastly, we have Mari over here, who is able to cleanse debuffs, which is what I was really hyping up Natsu for. Mari is one of those like kind of alternate solutions if you don't go for Natsu. And so after that, we have these new little content updates. Let me uh, make them a little bit bigger. And so what you will see for the first one is new content added exclusive weapon. So for those of you who've played like Revive Witch or Precon or literally like any of these waifu collectors, generally speaking, there is going to be some kind of like unique equipment, exclusive 
weapon where each of these characters get their own weapon. And so in the context of Blue Archive, the exclusive weapon is in essence a stat stick. So over here, I have Azusa's page open. I'm going to scroll down all the way down to her unique weapon. And so you can see this bad boy over here, unique equipment, a gun that Azusa always holds tightly. I'm going to go over to the limit break and you can see passive skill enhanced to harsh training plus. So passive skills, you guys need to remember that the passive skills is the third one across this one over here. And passive skills, generally speaking, are just kind of like a stat stick. For Azusa, that's a straight 26.6% increase to her crit rate. With the UE, she is going to just get another flat increase, 190 in addition to that 26.6. And so I really want to make this distinction because in some of the other games, especially one of the ones that I do play Princess Connect, the unique equipments generally drastically change a unit's playstyle. Like for example, uh, a tank suddenly is able to do like 5,000 damage or something. I just wanted to be very clear that that doesn't happen here. It's essentially the units that get strong, like they just get a little bit stronger. However, this is not always the case where we have units like like Hibiki. And as you can see, Hibiki's fancy light is going to give her stability, which is utterly useless. And so my dudes, maybe it is time to do a unique equipment tier list. However, we'll think about that another day. And so before we finish up with the unique equipment, sorry, the exclusive weapon, I want to come back over here. And I do want to say that there is this second kind of enhancement we've got at the three star limit break. All of the students will be receiving a terrain bonus, not always to sunglasses, but like a tier up at least. And then as for the gun itself or the weapon itself, there is also going to be stats attached to it, attack and HP. Honestly, it's a great idea to level these up. All right. So with that being said, we can move back over to this one over here where we will be receiving new content added called scrimmage. So scrimmage is very, very straightforward. Essentially, when we get our unique, sorry, our exclusive weapons, these exclusive weapons are going to require some materials to craft, which is going to be provided by the scrimmage game mode. If you are looking for it on the wiki, it is actually called school exchange and so tldr this is kind of like your daily farmable stage where we're able to get these materials and then ultimately craft and level up our unique equipment and actually whilst we're on this topic the other things that you do actually need are the character shards themselves so if you do want to get like the unique equipment for car and bunny then you better have some car and bunny shards or lfs to actually be able to juice it up okay and so i think that's the bulk of it next we've got the 16th mission the 16th chapter which is pretty nice it just means more farming more high modes which is great as for the next one max level expansion to 73 up to 75 that is also quite good considering in that guide video that i'm telling you guys to watch for this event hopefully we're going to be burning a ton of stamina to be able to rush to 75 asap just as a byproduct of the strategy that i'm mentioning and then for the last two we have some cafe features we've got a new cafe feature added with furniture interactions where like it's very similar to a lot of the other games like i think arc knights uh alchemy stars princess connect like the characters can actually interact with the furnitures now. And then to wrap it all up, it is going to be Jack O. Lantern Cafe set. It's just a new set. I'm getting pretty sick of my arcade thing. Okay, so moving on to the next tab, May Main Story. This is actually pretty crazy because look at this. Sensei slowly uncovers Trinity's dark past and like there are betrayals and stuff like, bro, I signed up for a happy-go-lucky princess game. Actually, no, schoolgirl game. But for you guys who are very interested in this one, rejoice. With that said, let's move on to June. And so with June, we have two very, very important characters coming up. We've got Akko, which is essentially heralded as the best unit in the game. If you do want a TLDR as to what Akko actually does, she is essentially a massive like hyper carry enabler. So for example, you're going to be like juicing up your Iori or your Haruna or maybe auto attackers or whatever. Akko is going to essentially make one of your teammates a living god. And on the other hand, we have this question mark coming soon. Who could it be? I don't know, man. Who could it be? I guess we will find out as time goes on. However, with that being said, let's move on to the next one, July. So for July, we essentially have a whole bunch of different characters coming out as well as a new story. I don't believe there's overly many system changes, uh, only two over here. And essentially all those system changes are is the Tactical Challenge Season 3 where we are getting a bracket reset. However, I do believe it's actually coming in May now. So if you guys did not get the memo and are wondering where the 500 Tactical Challenge coins as well as 1200 Pirate scenes came from just out of nowhere it's actually for this one where they are changing the tactical challenge season two to end 
much earlier at the end of May, which is in about a month, instead of the originally scheduled July over here. So as you can see, we are in July over up here. And so this one down here is not valid anymore. And if you want my thoughts on like these changes, uh, is this a good move? I think it is. I am pretty sure it is. And so with that said, let's move on. We've got the Hot Springs Resort theme set. Nothing to add there. It's just some nice cosmetics. We've got the story coming up. And then with that, let's have a look at these different characters. We've got Chinatsu Hot Springs. We've got Tomoe. We've got Cherno Hot Springs. Nautica Hot Springs as well. And so starting from the right hand side, because I'm a psychopath with Nautica Hot Springs, she is certainly a PVP character. I believe she is going to just make the store meta, the tank meta, a lot tougher to deal with than it is already today. On the other hand, we've got Hot Springs Cherno. As far as I know for now, she doesn't have overly much utility. As for our one star unit Tomoe, she's actually quite good. However, being a striker and being good in like the various raids, like the red raids, yellow raids, and blue raids at this point in the game where we've already kind of like leveled up a lot of different units for each of them. Like Haruna, we got Izuna, we got Shiroko, we got Aru, we got Azusa, we got like a whole bunch of different characters that like are fitting into these comps. Tomo is good. It's just that she's not very high priority. And considering she's a one star anyway, like you'll get her eventually. And then lastly, we have Chinatsu Hot Springs, where she is essentially a really great support on the offensive side. With all of that being said, however, I do want to mention that all of these characters are going to be permanent. So if you do miss out on them, like on this event banner kind of thing, just remember that you could be spooked or maybe we could go pick them up next year. So honestly, if you guys are down bad for Jemmys at this point, I would say hold on to them and let's go roll for better things. All right, and so with that said, I think that is going to bring us to the last one, which is the July main story just a lot more really, really intense things. And so my dudes, with that said, this is going to bring us to the end of the video. I do want to ask you guys a question, which is how much jammies do you have? Are you guys prepared? for the bunny banner. Me personally, I have just enough for about one spark, I think maybe one spark and like another 3000 or something. But for me personally, I need to save for the Akko as well as the Miku. So yeah. Let me know how big your gem stashes are down in the comments below. And if you do end up leaving a comment, I'll really appreciate it. So thank you guys so much. Y'all already know the drill. If you did like this video or this video was kind of helpful, please consider a like, a subscribe and a notification bell on. But otherwise, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, as Bunny Asna once said, all good things must come to an end. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.